Hi, everyone. Welcome to this weekend's broadcast of our church service. Uh, we hope to uh, bless you right there in your homes. Uh, we understand these are difficult times. This is not perfect, uh, but it is all that we have. And uh, we are blessed to be able to take advantage of our technologies, uh, our video streaming platforms, and uh, uh, we're blessed also to have some technical, some technically uh, gifted people who are able to uh, put this together for us. So I welcome you to Christian Life Church. I'm Pastor Bob Bernier, and uh, I will be bringing to you a short message. Uh, before I do, we have a, a song prepared for you. Uh, an opportunity for us to worship. Uh, and I realize it's not the same kind of worship experience as we have when we're all gathered together. And uh, it may be some time before we can worship in that way, uh, given the way things are peaking here in southern New England and especially Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Uh, but we're going to make the most of it. We're going to have to endure through this. I'm reminded of scriptures that say, you know, to sort of put on the um, uh, set our minds to be like that of a good soldier. And so um, I want to I want to encourage you to s soldier on during this time. It might be a difficult time for you. You might be going through some disappointments, some emotions. I imagine that by now, a month long, you probably have a little bit of cabin fever. Uh, you might be getting upset. You might be getting angry. I just want to assure you that some of these are normal human reactions. And I encourage you to draw your strength from the Lord. Today's message hopefully will encourage you. Uh, I'm going to read from both the Gospels and from a portion of the Psalms. I'm also going to uh, do a sort of audio devotional that uh, goes into that the Psalm that I've selected a little bit more. Um, I'll be able to do that a little bit more in depth uh, for those of you who'd like to do that. And I'll do that uh, as an audio uh, attachment, if you will, It'll be on our, our website. I'd like to announce, I said last week, that we I'd like to call the church to prayer and fasting every Monday uh, for uh, our nation, for us personally, for our church. Uh, we want to pray for success through all of this. We want to come through at the other end uh, um, and uh, come out uh, standing up and tall. I want you to do the same. I want your families to be well. And that's how we're praying. And so to that end, I'm going to invite our intercessors. I'm going to invite our musicians. I'm going to invite our youth, anyone that has the ability to connect, uh, send us an email. We will send you an invitation and you will be able to connect via Zoom. And uh, we'll be able to have a time of prayer for an hour between the hours of six and seven on Monday night. And it might just be a few of us or it might be 12. There might be 30 of us. Uh, but I just want to encourage you to do that. Along those lines, you know, this is kind of a video announcement. Don't forget to send us a little note right on our website. There's a little contact form. Put your name, your contact information. Let us know how you uh, what you got out of the message, uh, whether it was uh, something that you needed. Uh, maybe you have some insight. Some people have gotten words, uh, which we are trying to figure out how to publish and, and make available to you. I want you to think about this. We are still one church. We're still a united body, and there's no distance in the spirit. And even though that we might be watching and, and uh, um, interacting this way, that we're still part of a body. The Bible talks about the cloud of witnesses about us. We're still part of the, the human family, but we're part of a church body. And, um, you know, we carry one another in our hearts. I carry you in my hearts. I think about you. I, when I find out that someone has a birthday, I might make a call. Or someone's hurting, I might make a special call. Some of our leaders are calling and contacting you. I just want to encourage you to pick up the phone and respond to them. It is your way of saying that you're okay. Uh, there are at least two members who have family members who are battling the COVID-19 disease. Um, and so I'd ask you to continue to pray, not just for our church, but for our families. You know, if, if each of us know uh, 10 people, 20 people, you never know how many thousands of people that we interact with as a body. And uh, I just want to encourage you to pray. And so with that, I bless you in the name of the Lord. I welcome you today in this beautiful day in April, and uh, uh, we look forward to a little time of worship. Let's begin with a word of prayer. 
Our Father and our God, we thank you for another opportunity with, in which we can meet together. It isn't perfect, but Father, you have appointed a time such as this for us to use these technologies to stay informed and to stay united and to stay strong and to be encouraged and to be equipped. Father, I pray from the oldest to the youngest, to the persons uh, closest to a 100 and the people who are just barely born, Lord God, I pray, Father God, that as a church, your blessing would be upon them. I pray for husbands and wives uh, who are sheltering together. I pray for the worker who may be out of a job. I pray, Lord God, for the housewife or the mother that has to manage her children. And I pray for everyone, Lord God, who has to serve somewhere in this community by by serving either in a, in a frontline ministry, like a, a, a maybe a doctor, a nurse, a firefighter, a police officer, but Father, also the many staff and janitors and people who are working in factories or, or in the food service industry who are on the front lines of exposure uh, to uh, this uh, deadly disease uh, uh, virus. And so, Father, I pray, Lord God, that for those people who have antibodies, that, Father, they would be strong, that people would recover, and that, Father, we would be strengthened as a people. We pray for our nation. We pray for those making decisions, principals, uh, governors, uh, board of health agents, Lord God, uh, and the president himself. And Father, on the larger scale, uh, all of the organizations around the world that are uh, seeking to feed people who are hungry, uh, heal people who are sick, and minister to those in need, we pray. Lord, bless this time that we share together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's listen to this worship song. Send your fire. Send your rain. fire, then the oil, the wind, and rain. Nations and nations, tribe by tribe, person to person, oh my Jesus died. Speaking out your word, Lord, Holy Spirit, be our guide As we wait upon you, Lord We'll go forth in your name, O Lord Send your fire, send your rain Heaven's change, send your fire, send the oil, the wind, and rain. Then your fire, send your rain, holy oil in Jesus' name. fire, send the oil, the wind, and rain. Hello again. My message today is storms change us storms change us we're going, to get, we're going to go to two sections of scripture one in the new testament and one in the old and uh, i just want to begin and preface my words by 
suggesting this at any given time in our lives uh, we face storms and chances are on any given Sunday uh, there are probably a third of our church who are going through some sort of storm it might be an economic storm there may be a family issue uh, that's raging there may be some surprising news at work um, there may be some other issue we, we we had not considered we've done our best but somehow we're in the middle of a of a storm then there's probably a third of the people who are you know they've just come out of the storm so they're happy they've they've made it through the rain if you if you will um, someone who's been through the storm can really be helpful to somebody who's been there um, if you've been through an economic hardship and you've learned how to budget you know with with limited means you you might be helpful in helping someone else uh, uh, figure out how to how to you know access food stamps where to get assistance uh, you might be uh, you might be able to help them uh, yourself uh, there are times I was blessed uh, when we were going through difficult times someone showed up at our door with a with an entire cardboard box and they had cooked a meal every you know the main meal they had the sides you know we had kids at the time and and uh, it was a, a surprise and it was a blessing um, and that happened more than once you know uh, they weren't always family members they were sometimes uh, just just members of the church um, and so um, you know there are people sometimes who come through the storm they're the ones who are singing because you know they they're not, they're not praying in the same way but they're able to pray for you as if they've been through it and that's the truth but then there's always a third and maybe a portion of us that are about to face a storm we may not even be aware that we're going into a storm we might be doing everything right and next thing you know we're completely uh, going to be surprised by the storm. You don't know when it happens, but every now and then it comes. So I'd like to begin with a reading from uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, this story happens in the other Gospels, but John's Gospel I happen to like. It's a very short segment, and if you don't mind, I'm going to read it. It says that this, this is a sign of uh, Jesus' uh, divinity. Uh, John has several of these that he uses to prove that Jesus was the Son of God. And so in verse 16 in chapter 6 John is writing when the evening came the disciples went down to the sea they got into a boat and they started across the sea to Capernaum darkness had already set in but Jesus had not yet come to them when then a high wind arose and the sea began to churn after they had rowed about three or four miles they saw Jesus walking on the sea he was coming near the boat and they were afraid but he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they were willing to take him on board, and at once the boat was at the shore where they were heading. Now, this same story is in the book of Mark, it's in the book of Matthew. Uh, Mark's gospel adds this other little tidbit. It says, When Jesus got into the boat, the wind ceased. And the, and they were utterly astonished. In Matthew's Gospel, there's a little bit more detail. There's the whole story about Peter, who beckons to Jesus. You know, they, the disciples think they saw a ghost. They don't know who this apparition is, someone walking on water. And uh, Jesus tells them, don't worry, I'm walking on the water, it's me. And uh, uh, Peter, who is the leader of the group, said, if it's you, call me out there, bid me I come. And you know, and sure enough, Peter walked on the water. But then he saw the wind and he saw the waves and uh, he got frightened and he started to sink and he cried out to the Lord. He said, Lord, save. And the Lord took him by the hand and together they got back in the boat. And uh, these are, this is a classic uh, scripture. Uh, every young Sunday school student uh, learns this. You, if you're not a church person, uh, maybe you've heard the story of walking on water. Um, and that's where the expression comes from. It comes from, from you know, um, 
Matthew's gospel and it comes from uh, John's gospel uh, and Mark's gospel. And, and um, um, these, like I said, these are classic. But there's a there's a great lesson there. There's a great lesson that the minute Jesus got into the boat in John's gospel, they were at the place where they were about to land. So in other words, get let's get this picture in our mind. There's a storm. They were directed to go out. They are rowing against the wind. They're getting nowhere. The wind is against them. It seems like there's there's no way to progress. And then suddenly Jesus comes walking on the water. And then he enters their boat. And when he enters their boat, the wind ceases. And not only that, when the wind ceases, they are where they were supposed to be. They didn't blow all the way back to the shore that they were in. They, they got to the place they were supposed to go, the place where Jesus had directed them to go. We're living in and through something that we will, rem will, we will remember all of our lives. And at the end of this, we are going to be exactly where the Lord wants us to be. We need to, we need to ask him into our boat, if you will. Ask him into our lives. Invite him into our presence. We cannot be fearful. Oh, listen, we can be like Peter and walk upon the water. And poor Peter, he... He sometimes takes it a little bit of ribbing. Uh, I hear preachers talk about how he lost faith and how he got all wet and he needed Jesus. You know what? That's the whole point. We all need Jesus. And you know what Jesus did? Is he brought him right back into the boat. But John makes it clear that when Jesus got in the boat, the storm stopped. Now, there's another story uh, about the storm-tossed sea where, where Jesus was sleeping in the bottom of the boat and he, had, he, was wake, he was woken up by the disciples and the disciples were frightened and scared. And Jesus said, where's your faith? You, you guys have such little faith. And then Jesus spoke to the wind and the sea uh, just settled down. The wind stopped. And in, in, in both cases, the, the apostles, these disciples of his marveled. They marveled at what God could do. You know, I've been around long enough in ministry that I've learned that sometimes when you're going through the middle of something, it's hard to know the end from the beginning. You just you just don't know what to do next. You can only take a few steps. It seems everything that you're trying to do seems to be against you. You seem to be making no headway. I like Psalm 107. Psalm 107 is, is, is a very interesting psalm. I'm only going to read a portion of it uh, for the sake of time. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to record an audio sort of expanded uh, version study uh, of uh, Psalm 107. If you'd like to do that meditatively this week, it'd be a good Bible study for you. Uh, but Psalm 107 it's interesting because it's 40 something verses long, but right there in the middle, and, and this is a chiasm. It's often the case that when ancient writers would write, they would write in such a way that 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 the points that are made along the way focus on one very specific central idea. Now it begins with thanks, it ends with thanks, but right there in the middle, the very center of the psalm, it says in verse 20 to 22. He sent out his word. God sent out his word and he healed them. He delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. For his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Now, you may not feel like singing a song of joy, but when God brings you through the trial, through your time of troubles, you will want to tell of his marvelous deeds.
Psalm 107 is 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 broken up into several uh, stanzas, if you will. All of the psalms were either songs or they were po poetic. Uh, um, uh, tonal type psalms that people would sing. This is how they would memorize uh, their scripture. Psalm, Psalm 107 starts with the refrain that repeats several times, several times throughout this 40 verse psalm. It doesn't take long to read 40 verses. Uh, you could do that in a few minutes at home if you have your Bible out. But right at the beginning in verse one, it says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. And his steadfast love, that means the steady, loyal, faithful love, lasts, endures forever. It doesn't go away. You know, one of the temptations during a trial such as this, a pandemic, it's very easy to ascribe uh, to the pandemic or to these things the judgment of God or the, the God is angry and those kinds of things. And you know what? Uh, the Bible is very clear that every time his people were going through trouble and they cried out to him, every time his people called upon him, did you hear what I said? Every time they called upon him, God answered and delivered them out of their troubles. So the psalm is broken up into several um, segments, if you will. It talks about the time the children of were in the desert and that God got them out of the desert. When they were in prison, it says he broke He broke the bronze chains or he, he broke open the bronze doors. He set them free. But I like this section, which has a little bit to do with our gospel reading. The Bible, the Bible describes a segment in if you and if you can if you can if you can turn there you could turn to verse 23 it says some went down to the sea in ships they were doing business on the great waters they saw the deeds of the lord and his wondrous works in the deep now there's something marvelous and beautiful about the ocean about the lakes israel has one giant in in inward lake Gal the sea of galilee which Great storms developed. We, we saw that in our gospel reading. And of course, Israel borders on the Mediterranean Sea. Ships would come from far and wide through Israel on their way to the, uh, the Near East and uh, on the way back to Europe. But in verse 25, it says, For he commanded and raised the stormy wind and lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to heaven and they went down to the depths. The psalmist is describing not a calm sea, but he's he he's describing the kind of sea that's very, very wavy. If you've ever watched television shows where they go deep sea fishing and whatnot, and you'll see these ships, big ships sort of rising the crest of the waves, 40 foot waves, and then they come down to the valley. And when they're low, these these monstrous 50 and 60 foot waves can just sort of overwhelm them. Well, that's the language of this psalm that, and, and, and you know, um, we read that he commanded it. You got to understand that the, 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 the Bible just ascribes everything to God. He made this world. And so suddenly there's this situation where um, storms have arisen and they're massive. And they're mountainous. When you're on top, oh my goodness, the bottom looks like it's going to drop forever. And then your boat just goes down. Now, we're, you know, today we have big steel ships and things. You got to remember, in those days, even the biggest ships were much smaller than what we have today and very frightening to the average uh, fisherman. Uh, the, most of the disciples were fishermen. They understood this. They understood this psalm. They would have known it in part of their uh, Hebrew uh, lexicon and part of their history that God commands the waves. God raises the waves. God stills the sea. In verse, in verse, in verse uh, 26, it says their courage melted away in their evil plight. Now, 
when when you talk about evil plight, we're not saying that all businessmen, all business persons are evil. Uh, in comparison to the righteous things of the Lord, the Bible sometimes uses these these this language to say these are the base things of this world. And so here are businessmen trying to just earn a living. Maybe they've forgotten God. Um, there are many people today who do business with no regard for righteousness. They lie, they steal, they cheat. Maybe maybe you've been one of those people. Maybe you've cheated on your taxes. Uh, maybe you charged a little bit more. Maybe you put your thumb on the scale. Uh, maybe you've taken advantage uh, to someone else's hurt. Well, these are things that are not pleasing to God. But here it says, all of a sudden, in the middle of the storm, these fishermen or these merchants who are on the sea suddenly have no courage. None is left. There's something about a storm that just frightens people. Um, it rids you of everything. And you might be at that place in the middle of the storm. You, I, I'm watching in our country, there are people who are at their wit's end and they've only had a month in, in sort of isolation. They've not gone through years or two years or three years of deprivation the way some countries have faced. Verse 27, it says, they reeled, we're thinking about these seamen, these, these hard fishermen or seamen, they reeled and they staggered like drunken men. They were at their wits end. That term in the Hebrew, that term, they were at their wits end means that they had no longer any wisdom in them. In other words, there was no sense left. They didn't know what else to do. There are many people today that thankfully we have a lot of people that know what to do in the middle of this storm, in the middle of this pandemic. But um, when you're in the middle of a trial, if you're one of those third and you're in the middle of your trial right now, chances are we're all facing some of this together. When you're in the middle of this trial, you get to a place where you might say, I, I don't know what else to do. I've done all that I know to do. I've done the hand washing. I've worn the mask. I've, I've kept all my surfaces clean. I've avoided contact. And, you know, I'm still facing other issues. Now I have financial issues. Or I have family issues. It says right here that they were at their wit's end. But in verse 38, this is what I love. Or, excuse me, verse 28. Psalm 107, verse 28. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. They cried to the Lord, and he delivered them. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. You know, when you look at this, you have to compare. You can't help but compare that verse in John's gospel where it says, after Jesus stilled the storm and he got into their boat, they were at the place that they were intending to go. The psalm then continues with one of its refrains. A refrain is a repetitive stanza or a repetitive uh, chorus, if you will, uh, that would have been uh, sung usually in this song. Usually, usually one person would sing and then the people would respond. And verse 31, it says, Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works for the children of men. Let them extol him in the congregation and praise him in the assembly of the elders. You know, uh, the psalm has many beautiful other uh, um, um, parts. It talks about how he turns rivers uh, into a desert, but then he makes the desert bloom and he brings water and springs of water pools of water into a parched land. And then he lets the hungry dwell there and establish a city. These are very, very encouraging songs. They recall bad times, but they recall bad times in the sense that they recall and testify 
of how good God is. God is good. He is going to get his people through. Verse 41 says he raises the needy out of affliction. Are you needy today? Well, God raises the needy out of affliction. Verse 43, 40, 42 says the upright see it and are glad. I am going to, if I'm not in the trial, when I come out of the trial, I am going to be glad when I see what God is doing, what God has done. Verse 43 says, whoever is wise, are you wise? Last week I preached on the wise and the foolish builders. The wise man dug deep, put his house on the foundation. The foolish man built it on sand, but then the storms came and the winds came, and the floods rose, and the house that was built on sand was destroyed. But the wise man's house, because it was founded upon the rock, it stood. Over here it says in verse 43 of Psalm 107, whoever is wise, let him attend to these things. Let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Jesus said the same thing last week after he preached this great discourse of messages in Matthew 5 and 6 and 7. He finally says, let him who has wisdom, he who understands these things and does them, I will liken him her to the wise man that builds upon the rock. Like I said, he sent his word and he delivered them. Let us thank him. Let us make thanksgiving. Let us give something to him. Let's make our offerings. It, for the children of Israel, it cost money or it cost them a sacrifice of some sort. They brought it forward, but they gave thanks to the Lord for what he did. Look, Listen, this is part of life. Sometimes storms are part of a bad decision. You, you make a bad purchase, now you have to pay the bill. Uh, sometimes uh, you don't want to do what's right. and You end up in some corner of, of life where you just say, I should have never made those decisions, now I'm stuck. Well, uh, the good news is that you're not stuck if you call upon the Lord. Uh, he will get you out of the desert and he will break open uh, the bonds uh, of, of any kind of a jail, any kind of chains that have you bound. Sometimes storms are the result of sin. You know, real consequence, there's real consequence to sin. Sometimes people, people feel guilty about sin and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn. Well, my job is simple. Turn to the Lord. Ask him to forgive you. That's what that's what God does. God does this best. God so loved the world that he sent Jesus that whosoever believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to forgive you. He came to take the place and take, take you know, this is a, a, a longer message, but Jesus died on the cross for you. And because of that, God has accepted him. And his sacrifice, Jesus showed you how much he loved you. He was willing to take the punishment for your sins. That's part of our message. That's part of our hope. And that's part of our future. We're going to get through times of trouble. Um, you know, maybe, you know, I love I love the scripture that says, in, in towards the end, verse 41, it says, He raises up the needy out of affliction, and he makes their families like a flock. You know, maybe you've been apart from church. Maybe you've been raised in church. Maybe you are, you know, you're well familiar with the term backslidden. You've slidden back. You've been apart from the fellowship. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, you're welcome to be part of our church. You're welcome to be part of his church. Uh, Jesus will forgive you and he will make you part of the flock. Um, with regard to this pandemic, let's look at it as a storm. And let's look at it as a storm upon which he walks. Jesus walks on water. And all you need to do is you need to invite him into your boat. When you invite him into your boat, you're going to be where you need to be. Listen, that's my message today. May God bless you. May he keep you. If you haven't believed Christ, would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I believe that you walk upon the waters and that you are Lord. 
I invite you into my life and let the storm in my spirit cease. Give me grace and strength during this time. We also pray together as one body that you would bring an end to this awful pandemic in our country. Give us wise people who can, you know, not only come up with solutions for our people, but may our people become strengthened physically, spiritually, emotionally. May we build the antibodies within that we need to fight off this terrible infection. We ask your comfort for those who have lost loved ones. We pray strength for those who face recovery. And Father, we pray for our nation, Lord, that you would rebuild us in a way that glorifies you so that we can extol you with our story because it's your story. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Father, I ask your blessing upon your people. Father, give them mercies fresh each day. Get them through the storm. Grant them peace. Cause your face to shine upon them. And may Jesus Christ preserve us until the day of his coming. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Goodbye.